as you know, uh, uh, we talked about Derek's involvement with the program, and in fact, he, he was part of the development team uh, as we were getting prepared for the for the launch. Had the opportunity to um, uh, work with the engineers. I think you did some on roading, off roading. Yeah. Maybe tell it, take us through a little uh, bit of that intentional off roading. Actually, <laughs> yes. yeah. usually it's off off roading, which you didn't mean. But no, it's, I've actually been working with Bentley since the year 2000, since we first went to Le Mans in 2001, two and three. Slightly involved with that project, which was, you know, very interesting, very exciting for me as a, a long Le Mans driver, and to see Bentley coming back after 70 years and then winning it, which was pretty, spe pretty spectacular. And Butch and I were talking about the car this morning because he was fortunate enough to race. I was, unfortunately, I was, I wasn't born in the first time they went to Le Mans back in the 29s and 30s, <coughs> and when they went back into year 2000, I was too bloody old. So I, I, I have to put up with driving road cars. But uh, it was nonetheless, who said that? <laughs> but, uh, um, but old guy. Yeah, another one. Um, but uh, the old stories are the best stories, they say. But um, so I was very fortunate to be involved in that early era. And of course, the initial development of the, of the Continental GT as you see it today. And I think what's remarkable is that that car, you know, came out in 2003 in Europe. And basically it hasn't changed much. All has happened is it's been gradually modified all the way through. And still, as I was driving through Boca yesterday, I pulled up at a ga uh, day before, I pulled up at a gas station, actually in Naples, Florida, to be honest. And as I ca went in and as I came out of the gas station, people remarked on how gorgeous the car was. And you're going, that's amazing, really, when you think that that car's been out, you know, 50, uh, th was it 12, uh, 13 years. It's absolutely astonishing. So, you know, but Bentley have got a lot to be proud of. And during that period, you know, we developed and did the ice record. Can you imagine 205.8 miles an hour in a Continental GT on rubber tires? I mean, not on, not on, not on, you know, studded tires, anything fancy. They were literally winter tires that anybody can put on. They put on them up in this part of the world during the winter, I'm sure. So it's amazing what that car has done. And of course, and then we come up to this stage that we're in now and, uh, I was very fortunately asked by Mr. Durheimer to be a little bit involved with driving, you know, the, the finite product. And um, I went out in it last year after Pebble Beach, and about 16 from the from the company, from the team, really came designers and uh, engineers and that sort of thing. We went out in the countryside outside San Francisco and went off for two days, and it was just remarkable because obviously a lot of the time we spent at 45 miles an hour on the motorway and then 55, and I was getting very bored and thinking, do I really need all this? <laughs> I mean, you know, I like to go 145, but not 100. Uh, but I could see why they had to do it as part of the program, and we were there for two days trying to just sign the car off. And then uh, Mr. Durheimer said to me, come on, he said, I want you to drive it through down through this valley. And we were sort of down with a sort of forest below. It's a bit like we were on today with a rock face on the right. And as I was saying earlier, and I was in the situation when you've got the CEO of the company sitting next to you and he says come on let's go and you go what does he mean by let's go how fast is let's go and uh, particularly as a driver that's you know got a moderate re reputation it's so still easy to make a mistake and it's so easy to go off the road and say oh dear I didn't have to do that how fast do I go with the boss but if I didn't go quick enough he's going to say you know what have we got him for he's a real old washout he didn't try hard so I, 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 no that's right so I, I I just got hold of the car and anyway we were driving through these fast sweeps and turns and we came to this one section and it was the first time I really realized just how amazing the vehicle was which hopefully you've learned a bit about today as we came down into this corner I, as I got there I hit the brakes thinking actually I'm going far too fast and I thought I, I didn't dare look at him and I just sort of t and I came off the brakes as you should and I turned into the corner and drove it around and he just went around the corner of this rock face which I didn't know how tight it was I just turned the wheel kept turning and kept turning when we got around the corner, I went, that's unusual. I should have been on the other side of the road here. Nothing was coming, thank goodness. And I think he thought I was really good. But, I, <laughs> but in fact, it was really was the car. I mean, it was just the fact that I had the confidence to do it because I knew what I felt the car t could do and the corner wasn't any more severe than I'd hoped. But that proved to me and talked to me about this new platform that we have in the ULEP the new electronic suspension, which is absolutely astonishing. I call it electronic because basically it is. It's got a real good technical name, but it's really what it is. And, uh, you know, to me, to be, I think we're, 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 it's the first time Bentley produced a car that's been, you know, at the head of the field. I mean, we're the first people with it. And I'm sure you today enjoyed it. Everybody I spoke to said I, it was so smooth. And when you watched it going down here and braking and going through that chicane at the end, when you watched it from the rear end, I mean, the car just went, right and left like that it didn't go like that as it went through and give a wallow 
and I think that's it's quite a remarkable feat to get the car handling so well. Of course the dilemma is now everybody else is going to have it in no time at all and we've got to think of something else but it's nice to be ahead for a while and hopefully we'll get ahead with the next product that comes out. But you know I mean there's so much about the car when we were testing there's little things that a racing you probably wonder why a racing driver is asked to do it and there's lots of things that come out that when somebody who has been driving the vehicle for months and months gets in it he can sort of come up with some and say did you notice that and there was a couple of other small things that cropped up that I thought weren't quite right about it and they said yeah that's quite a good idea and there was a particular thing where when we accelerated uh, sorry as when we're on these days we drive them hard we're all driving to show you you're trying to show yourself how good it is and what you're trying to show us how good you are and uh, so and thank goodness you were all good the ones I was with anyway <laughs> so but you're out there doing this but you never really drive it really super smoothly you're out there like you are with the family and so we were driving along in California at the beginning and literally as a sort of I would pull out to overtake something and I'd be in let's say seventh gear and as I pulled out I would feed the power on that you normally would uh, obviously to overtake because if you kick it down granny's going to get a whiplash in the back so you don't want that so you feed the power on but I then wanted more power and more power and it wasn't really pulling by in seventh gear and it wouldn't didn't want if I pressed gently it didn't want to go down to sixth gear and it was something that I mentioned that night to Rolf Freck the chief engineer of the project and they actually altered the gear ratio so that in fact now it drops down immediately it drops into the next gear without it giving you whiplash because what happens in the normally is you think I want more I want to go down a gear and you eventually hit it hard like that and it drops down two gears or even three and off it goes and granny's got triple whiplash in the back <laughs> so consequently it was nice to sort of have that little bit of input that as a sort of racing driver I was driving smoothly and I needed sudden power, I needed immediate power but without flicking it. I actually have to admit I use the paddles a lot. I find it nice to be in the gear I want to be in. And this is such a beautiful gearbox that you can slip down two gears and you just sat by with all that torque. Um, so that, you know, that was really the two main things. There was another thing to do with the, the um, you know, uh, as you come, uh, what, what's it called, the P, when, you, when you're overtaking a vehicle and it, the lane change, you know, oh. the, lane, the lane change um, um, electronics. I found that they were probably a bit too responsive in fact and it reacted to things a bit too sharply so I know that they backed off a little bit on that so that it wasn't so as you pulled out or something came by you it didn't sort of make you move and I noticed that it did that to me a couple of times and we slackened that off. So I only did really three things on it but it was things that perhaps nobody else would have noticed so it's an advantage to put a professional driver in there as any prob driver probably would have done like myself and just sort of come up with a couple of things that we actually didn't like. Remember we love driving fast but we like driving smoothly. I don't want every corner I come to to be a nightmare. I want to enjoy it. So um, hence driving today and I'm sure you enjoyed it today. I mean to take it round like that and just change direction in those S's without actually when you feather the throttle and went back on again it's kept on the same constant radius all the way around and I drove every one of you so I think I showed you exactly what I meant and as you went around and you backed off and kept on going around that corner there it just kept going on the same radius the whole time and it was just effortless it was so it was so easy the way it flowed through the corners and you literally then turned the wheel the other way and it flowed through that corner and yet it was quick because if you actually pushed it any harder it would have gone you know you'd have had a battle on your hands and the whole essence of driving the, any any car but these cars particularly all-wheel drive is to be smooth with it because if you do anything violent then of course the all-wheel drive says hell I've given I'm giving up I don't like this so you've got to drive it within that all-wheel drive but ab above all I just think it's great what you know the engineers have done and we have this package right now which is just just a perfect I mean really a, a really brilliant car to drive now, I, and the other thing I, I think, you know, as we, as we got out of the la on our last drive, I got out and I, t I think, was I with you on my last drive? And no, we touched the tyre, or I touched the tyre and you were walking. You, you forget how incredible those tyres are, what they put out with. That car weighs 5,000 pounds and we've been pushing the heck out of it. You have as well. We all have all afternoon on the road as well, driving it quite quickly. And you, you put your hand on the tyres and they're warm. You know, they weren't ridiculously hot. And you go, we forget just how important a good tyre is and also the brakes I mean we were braking down there I was probably pulling more top speed it they say than than he was in the GTR okay down here I was, I was putting just over 130 miles an hour 
and the hitting the brakes. And the last time we braked was at, at the five marker. He, Butch told me. I don't know he's right. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but it, you know, it was at the five marker. It's pretty damn close because he was braking just before that. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, just over 130. That's quick. When you think about it, you've come out of a corner where the GTR would be quicker, and then here we are in an SUV going down as quick as the damn GTR. You know, and when you think about it, it's fantastic. And you can drive it on the road. It's so easy to drive and so supple to drive in amongst the traffic. I mean, it, I think it's remarkable. And I know Bentley pay me, but they don't pay me enough to lie. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh...